Random thought. Are we giving Kanye just too much attention? I'm not. Yeah. I, you know, it's, and I really wonder if anybody really is because, you know, of course, he stirs up some more things this past week as he's doing his fashion show in Paris and has a shirt saying White Lives Matter, which, I mean, we all know Kanye is a stunt puller, right? And he's going to do stuff to get people talking. And so what I think people even get to the point now is just like, ah, well, what is he trying to promote next? Is there an album coming? Is it this? Is that? And I'm like, why are y'all even still worried about that? Why keep showing up anyway for anything that he's doing? Because Kanye, with this White Lives Matter, and then what does he do? He doubles down. The first thing he says past it is, well, they do. Then the next thing he does is on Thursday night, he sits down with Tucker Carlson, who has become the new Grand Marshal, the new... Um, Bill O'Reilly. Band leader. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he's a, what, what do you call the guy who leads the, um, who leads the marching band? Oh, um, yeah, that guy. The, the drum major? The drum major. He's the new drum yeah. major for Fox News. I since, thought you were going to you know, say the Grand Wizard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so was, when you said lead, I'm like, the Grand Wizard? <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. I was, it's, a, it's a Fox News. Same thing. <laughs> I mean, is it really? Look, they, why are they interviewing Kanye? Because he is saying white lives matter, right? And you watch the interview. And Kanye was doing exactly what I thought he would do, saying absolute bullshit. Yeah, he does. But it's one of those, hey, if this black guy says it, see, white lives matter. But yeah, Kanye is going to do Kanye. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what would happen if all of a sudden he tried to do one of those, let's say he had a, a runway shoot, um, a runway deal, and no one showed up. Maybe like five or 10 people, like a Trump rally, like five or 10 people are there, but no one else really shows up. You know, would that hurt his ego even more? He just says these off the wall things, and I've been done ever since slavery was a choice. Ever since he said that, I, I just don't, I, I don't care what he says, and I don't even pay attention to his new music, his old music, you know, college dropout and all that stuff. Great, but he's just on a level that I just like, dude, I, I just can't deal with you. And when you listen to him talk, what he said in that interview to Tucker about his dad and about his mom, I'm just like, are you? shitting me your mom's not here to defend herself he shitted on his mom or am i reading that wrong yeah yeah i think he re reconnected with his dad his dad told whatever story the mom can't back it up mm -hmm. and validate it and so now he's just making it seem like his mom is the liberal problem right and i was just like right. what is your deal dude <laughs> and yeah, but here's the thing it all boils back down to his relationship with kim so that's why he relates it to what's happening with him and kim and you know, because he did it in that interview. If you listen carefully enough, you hear him try to say, well, you know, uh, when I bought the house next door to Kim, people said I was crazy and I was a stalker. But I remember when we moved and I asked you why you didn't come to get me. And you said it's because my mom said this. And I'm like, everything for him is now coming to his new mom, who is Kim Kardashian, right? who has gone back to her side of the fence, her side of the tracks. She's no longer dealing with y'all. She's got her white woman body back, um, yeah. you know. She's removed all the extra fillers. Well, some of them, because there's still a couple still there. But, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, his whole thing, and you're going to feel really foolish. All the people that are backing this idiot and saying, well, he's still a genius. And I still blame y'all for that, because y'all started that by calling him a genius. Um, and say he spoke for all black people when he got up on stage and said, um, George Bush doesn't care about black people. When you allowed him to say that, and you said he was a genius before that, you said he was a genius after, and he said he speaks for black people at that point, you anointed him the leader, and you are the sheep that are following him to this day. And when you find out that all this that he's doing is only to get back with Kim, you're going to feel like the idiot. I don't think it's all to get back with Kim. I just think it's about to make everything about him. He yeah, has to have too. that attention. I don't think he's, he's not getting back with Kim. She's not going back. Don't tell him that. He's not yeah, going to believe it. He knows it. this not happened, but at least she this is. is what he does. He, he creates this buzz. Fox mm -hmm. people are talking about it. We're hit, sitting here talking about this bullshit. Mm -hmm. So this should have been in the bullshit segment. Uh, <laughs> show, but we're, we're about starting bullshit, off with some random but thought that's bullshit. What, yeah, <laughs> but that's what he does. You know, and it's just, uh, it, it's unfortunate. And I do agree with you. I think the fact that everybody called him a genius mm -hmm. and all those things got to his head. 
Mm-hmm. And then we allow the behavior to continue. You know, yeah. anytime he does anything or says anything, we we allow it because we want to see what's going to happen. And then now we have a whole lot more stuff to talk about. It's it's annoying, and there's no helping him. You know, there's certain people I think they're just too far gone that there's yeah. nothing you could do for them, and just you got to let them. He's going to do it to himself, one way or another. One way or another, and I mean, it's 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 crazy when the people he's dragging in with him because now you have um well not dragging because Candace Owens has been out there at least. Candace Owens is is somebody who can speak intelligently about making her shitless points. Um, she's she knows <laughs> the facts that she's coming with. She knows the lies she's gonna tell with it, and she's great at it. I give her that. Candace, is, if if you put her in, in front of anybody, she could argue her points. She's good at what she does, right? Um, but then Cela Marley, who goes out there and you know wears a shirt with Kanye, following along with Kanye, even t- tell him. Going on social media talking about you can't bully me, manipulate me, or coax me into silence, nor will you bully me into being who I don't want to be. I don't care how many tweets you make, DMs you send, or articles you write. I like that sentiment. I like that. Wrong thing to make that statement on, though. (laughs) Jesus Christ. No. I think she got what she wanted out of the deal. (laughs) You you know what she got? What? Notoriety. Because I had no Mm. idea who Celia Marley was. Even you, I was like, that's Bob Marley's Right, you're like, this Lauren Hill. i like, no, 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 it's not Lauren Hill's. It's Bob Marley's. <laughs> like, I was better to argue with you, but you sure I are. had no idea who she was. And I'm sure a lot of other people. But now, all of a sudden, a lot of people know who she is. I'm like, you know what? Play the game. Play that social media game and do you. Don't, don't falter for it at all. In today's microwave society, you're right. Because people forget why they know you or don't know you. And just the fact that, oh, I know this person. And so, because they can be mad at you today, but they'll be your fan tomorrow because they'll forget everything. It's... Oh, yeah. I mean, hell, let Kanye get on TV and be like, you know, this regular guy's Random Thoughts podcast, people are bullshit assholes and I hate them. I would love for him to do that. Great. <laughs> thank you, Kanye. Appreciate it. Thanks for helping a brother out. I know it's not your norm, but thank you. <laughs> Now, what if he said, you know what? I was listening to regular guys' random thoughts, and that guy, Terrell, you know, he um, he really made me see the error of my ways, and I think he's a stand-up guy. I mean, hey, you thank you, Kanye. Me? Thank you. He's not going to come to my house. I'm not going to invite him over for dinner. Just, I'll, 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 I'd retweet. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. And that's it. And just let the subscribers and followers come, and then I get interviewed by Tucker Carlson. What's it like to talk to Kanye? It was really interesting, Tucker. But can I ask you a couple questions? <laughs> <laughs> How's it feel to be sitting across from a real black man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, people said I talk white too, but don't get it twisted, Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> See, you and Kanye agree on something after all. <laughs> Hey, welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm just Terrell. You ever been out somewhere and overheard two people having crazy conversations? Yeah, well, we are those people, and we've been having these conversations since college. Yep, it's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast, episode 104. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and definitely leave a review. See, now, according to Tucker Carlson, if you were really black, you'd have said 104. 104. I'm a mass comm major. <laughs> yeah, I say ask. <laughs> <laughs> What? You're not trying salmon. to chop down a tree with every no. question? <laughs> no, I say ask and salmon. L is silent. <laughs> you don't say celibate. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. On the complete opposite side of the uh, political spectrum, um, and politics as usual, you know, Joe Biden making friends this week while Kanye is, you know, isolating himself. Well, making friends on the other side, you know, but he's uh, isolating himself. Here comes Joe Biden, like, well, Kanye followers, follow me. As he <laughs> decides to, to pardon um, weed uh, charges, uh, uh, federal, on the federal level. Right, on the federal level. And he mm-hmm. urged the governors to do the same at the state level. And I applaud this. I mean, he's mm-hmm. doing, if you really look at the agenda that Biden has pushed, it's the hardcore liberal right agenda. You know, yeah. we might have lost out on the abortion thing, but it's a hardcore liberal agenda. But I applaud that. I hope the other governors do. I I personally don't think 
you should possession of marijuana should be a felony or a misdemeanor to marijuana. Now, if you have caught with possession of 10 kilos of marijuana with the intent to distribute, <laughs> there's some charges with that. <laughs> And and that's some of the things that are in this as well too. It's like it's not like you just get away with everything. There's certain things that no, this is still there. And um, again, this is on the federal level. So him asking the states, you know what that means? That means like maybe in a blue state it's gonna work, but then again, you know those red states that don't want to, they're not going to. I mean, then but then again, it's a step further to um, it becoming legal nationally, right? Uh, potentially. Um, but but the thing is, when you look at how does it become legal everywhere, I think it's when the rich old white men can become richer. Well, they already can. It's just right now, because it's not uh, federally regulated, it's cash business. Mm -hmm. So they're becoming richer. They just can't. They don't have to report how rich. Right. So there's that. I don't have to report it. But what's interesting is I, I, I look at background checks. I'm looking at background checks for years for employment purposes. And you might see people in whatever state hit, got caught with, uh, you ever heard of people getting pulled over and there's a pipe or vape uh, pin mm -hmm. in their car? Normally a pipe and it had weed residue. Right. That was a misdemeanor. You would get wow. trouble for that. And that would be wow. on your record. And so, like, for this, if the governors of these other states wind up saying, hey, let's just dismiss things that are around marijuana. And, again, you have to put some regulations in there. But mm -hmm. people getting caught with, like, a little dime bag of weed and? Yeah. You get caught with the joint and? Yeah. Because, you know, when you look at the stats, and here's, here's the thing about it. It's not expunging it from your record, but it's also... Um, you know, it's not taking away certain rights, like being able to vote and, and, and whatnot, like it was doing in the past. But looking at the stats, like more than 6,500 people were convicted of simple possession between 92 and 2021, right, under, under federal law. And yeah. a couple thousand more under D.C. code, because that's what this does. It, 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 it does it for on the federal level and in the District of Columbia. Now, in the states and on the state level, there's a different there's a different part to this and that's the part that i think he's asking the governors for and if it happens it happens i mean and it's you know the people going well oh obama didn't do it well you know what obama got gay marriage okay so this is biden's um next one to get he's got to get the weed and he's doing a half you notice the timing of this is amazing because the yeah. midterms are on the way and it goes all right gotta do it close to the midterms so they can remember because, you know, these weed smokers ain't going to remember shit. So we do it close enough so that they remember. And if, if we're in a red state, all you weed smokers get out and vote for the blue guy. Because, therefore, <laughs> you can get this shit legalized in your state. I think that's what this is. At the end of the day, Biden, people are saying that he doesn't need to run again. I've already heard that he said he wants to run again. So if And He's if he doesn't, then who is there? Yeah. He's going to run again. Because if it's not him, who is it then, right? Because you've got a year and a half, actually just le less than a year, to really cement yourself as a top runner because the Republicans have their candidates out there and they're pushing forward already. So who's it going to be? What Biden's doing is setting himself up so he can say, when people say, well, what has he done? I gave you motherfuckers back some money on student <laughs> loans and I gave you weed. What else do you want from me? In the yeah. words of the philosopher Tyrese Gibsonstein, what more do you want from me? <laughs> so here, here's why I say Biden's going to run again, even though I don't think he should. But he's going to run again because mm -hmm. there could be other stronger Democratic candidates. But right now, Democrats can't, Democrats can't come in not united because right now the Republicans are not united. You've mm -hmm. got a group of them that are still Trump, you know, devout Trump followers, and then you got everybody else. So yep. the Republicans have a whole lot of work to do on their side. The Dems don't want to do that and like come in with a, you got Biden and someone else. It Biden's going to run again. Um, I personally don't think he should run with Harris, but he's going to. He's going to have to stick with that. Um, it is what it is. But I, I do appreciate a lot of things that he's done. Uh, there's stuff that he hasn't. You know, he's not been great, but I do appreciate this one, especially with the marijuana thing, because it's ridiculous for somebody to get something on their record permanently for a little bit of, a little bit of weed, <laughs> a little bit of weed. 
Look. Have you had a little bit of weed? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know, it, it's not, I, I don't think it's unprecedented that a president has changed their running, um, their running mate and their vice presidential candidate um, and, and their reelection bid, right? I, 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 I can't remember um, if it's happened before or not. But if he were to switch and not run with um, Kamala Harris again, he's had a black woman. Does he go with a Hispanic or Asian gay person next? Oh, he would go with Pete. That would make sense. Yeah. I could see that makes sense because Pete gets the, the young vote. Mm-hmm. You have the LGBTQ vote. Mm-hmm. He's smart. Mm-hmm. There's so much that he brings to the table. And if anything happened to Biden, we'd be like, okay, Pete's in charge. Does right Pete now, smoke the, the weed. Is that is, why he's doing this? Is that why he's doing this 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 weed thing? Does Pete smoke weed? He's setting up. He set the stage. <laughs> he said, but right now, if if Biden were to, to drop, Kamala takes it, and mm-hmm. there's not a lot of confidence on both the Republican and Democrat side. Yeah. On Kamala Harris being commander in chief. Yeah. So Pete would make sense. Now you're right. I, we'd have to look that up to see if there was ever a president, first term president that gets rid of his VP without it being the VP's choice. I mean, one thing the VP is like, look, I'm retiring. I'm old. I'm out. But maybe there's one. I wouldn't be surprised in a crazy history of you think about Madison and all those other presidents where all kind of crazy shit happened. It wouldn't surprise me. Right. Let's see here. Um, I'm actually typing in. And maybe it was Madison. Didn't he try to like kill his VP? Yeah. So multiple vice presidents who switched. Um, Multiple term presidents who switch VPs, um, early days, yes, the early days of the Republic. Um, Bird did it. VP vacancies, trifecta vice presidents. Um, wow, yeah, and this is a lot to to read, and it doesn't really put it in a good sense. It doesn't really <laughs> look like it. I think Jefferson, um, Thomas, Jeff- but see they. They also had different a different number of terms back then too. Like Jefferson right. had um, have a different vice president for the second term had little impact. Um, so there's that. So yeah, it, it, like I said, it has happened before. Nothing. I don't think anything recent because everybody yeah. recent has has kept their running mate. And and yes, you're right. Um, the one thing I would say that I want um, uh, President Biden to do, and I think you'll agree wholeheartedly with this because you have been very adamant about not liking when he does this. If you're going to appoint somebody before you announce the person, please don't tell us the race and the gender and the sexual orientation of who it's going to be before you make the announcement. Just, I'm going to search for the best candidate and that will be the person. Even if you already know. Do like everybody else who hires at any other point and goes, yeah, so we've got an open... Search for this position. You got it. <laughs> Finger guns. We have an open search for this position, and we're going to look long and hard to find the right candidate for the role. <laughs> Treat it like corporate America. That's what Trump was supposed to be doing. <laughs> we're sure we're going to find the right person for this position. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, the right person for the job showed up, um, and I say this even though it happened um, as we moved to the foot of Love of Sports. It came from somebody on the other side of the field of my team. So the 49ers playing the Rams on uh, Monday Night Football. And mm-hmm. Bobby Wagner, who used to be a Seattle Seahawk, and he's now still in the division. He's with the Rams, and he's terrorized the 49ers along with Russell Wilson for more than a decade. Um, and... This fan, in the middle of the game, runs out on the field. It was supposed to be two of them, but one got caught. The woman got caught because she was just too slow to jump over the fence, obviously. Um, (laughs) The guy made it, and he is streaking with um, a pink smoke bomb. And he's running, and he runs to the Rams' sidelines. Bobby Wagner does the perfect new form tackle. You know, shoulders to the body, shoulder to shoulder, you know, kept his head up, and he hit him and took him down. Now, if he really wanted to hurt him, he could have taken it right. old school and knocked his block off. He didn't. He just checked him and like, hey, 
We're losing this game. We're about to lose because Matthew Stafford is our quarterback and he's not doing shit for us. We need to get the hell out of here. I don't need you mm-hmm. just dragging this out. So he knocked the dude down. Cops got him. Security got him. He's gone. This guy is now suing Bobby Wagner for assault. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you do know you weren't supposed to be on the field in the first place, right? <laughs> it's like, I break into your house and I'm going to sue you because you shot me. Okay, but this is all follow the money. <laughs> the cause that he was going out there to do this for. Yep. They're the ones that encouraged him to sue. You know why? Because we're why? still talking about it. Majority of the time when people run up on stage, they get you knocked down. You don't know anything else about them. You don't hear from it again. Damn. Right. This keeps it into the media and keeps people talking about it. That's mm-hmm. all this is. I'm like, that is just crazy. And I love when they interviewed Ramsey at the end of the game. They asked, why did you do that? He said, look, with everything that's been going on in the world, you have no idea what some of these people are trying to do. Yep. You know, and it, like imagine if all it took, takes is one person to go out there with some type of bomb mm-hmm. onto soccer field, football field, yes. whatever, and blow some shit up. That's going to change how we do sports. We've seen this already. Time. It was in, what was that movie, Batman? Um, yes. The, 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 the last one. Remember, it was yeah. in a football game. Heinz Ward running down the field and disappeared and <laughs> as the field imploded. You're right. right. And, and, and Bobby Wagner... Um, is a vet, so he's been around, and he did. And you see pink smoke. Yes, it's you don't know. You, I've watched enough movies, and I've, I always say this: so like I've seen this movie before, I know how this turns out. And he was probably thinking the same thing, and goes, "Hmm, let me just just get this guy down." And I said, "The proper form tackle in today's game standard." A rookie might have taken his head off. <laughs> so he better be happy with Bobby Wagner and not somebody else. <laughs> right. Right. But, I mean, he's not hurt. You know, I'm sure he's going to go in there and crutches and a neck brace. Of course. You know, to make it look bad. But, again, I think the whole purpose of this lawsuit is to keep the story going around the cause that he went out yeah. there for. And there was another woman. I don't know if you saw that. There was another woman that was also supposed to trade on the field. Mm-hmm. They stopped her. But yeah. he got through. She didn't make it over the fence. Um, it, it was, you know, was, like y'all got to train before you go out to these things. I mean, we get it. You, out, <laughs> you can outrun the fat security, but you got to at least get over the fence first. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what? Maybe, maybe that was fate that she didn't make it over because they weren't going to tackle her. Maybe. I mean, equality. <laughs> equality. Whether you're a male possible terrorist or female possible terrorist, I think you should both get shoulder checked the exact same. As we take this over to this bullshit, um, OnlyFans has popped up quite a bit. And um, I think y- you saw this one here that uh, came in at rgrtpod at gmail.com. And it's a teacher who thought she was a MILF and things just went bad from there. So this is an interesting story that I loved. Thanks for sending us in. So this teacher in, I believe, Indiana. So a lot of times when you see these stories from the Daily Beast, I'm like, okay, this is some crazy stuff in Brazil. What did they do? What happened in (laughs) Ukraine? But I'm like, no, this is here. So Mm -hmm. she was a teacher. And as a teacher, she was worried about what's her long-term financial plan going to be? I mean, retirement and all that. Mm -hmm. And so what she thought is, I'm going to create an OnlyFans and maybe kind of have this MILF category and just have some pictures and stuff. And she had me about 100 subscribers, but she was just using that as a way to make some extra income yeah. on the side. Now, 100 subscribers at, let's say, $5 a mm-hmm. subscriber. It's an extra 500 bucks a month. If you're on a teacher's salary, that's still good, right? It's another $6,000 a year. Mm-hmm. So this reporter, a local reporter, catches the story. Because he's obviously on OnlyFans, but go ahead. Yes. So he interviews Looking her. So milfs. story gets out that she's this teacher and the MILF. So what does the school do? Of course, they fire her mm-hmm. because you obviously can't teach children how to do you know reading, writing, arithmetic because you have an OnlyFans. Apparently, you can't do that. Yeah. So so she's all upset. Of course, anybody would be. Well, because the story goes viral that she got fired now, all these people went to her OnlyFans, which happens all the time. So she went from. 100 subscribers to about 4,000 subscribers. There you so go. again, at $5 a mm-hmm. subscriber, let's just say $5 a subscriber, 4,000 subscribers, 20 grand a month. Yes. Over 200 grand a year. You're making more than principals. 
<laughs> and you're working less because you're not that's doing no, eight hours a day a of content. I think I, you misspoke just now because you said twenty grand a year. No, that's twenty grand a month. No, I said twenty grand a month, uh-huh. two hundred thousand a year. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. over okay. two hundred thousand dollars a year. Probably two forty. My bad. My bad. That's all me. Go ahead. Thank you for owning that. I appreciate that. Look at you, growth. It's, it's growth. okay. I'm I'm cutting that out. I'm cutting that out. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna get it edited. The whole thing. Oh god. So, uh, so she starts doing this OnlyFans as a teacher, or she's mm-hmm. a milk. One of her subscribers realizes she was a teacher, and he says, "Hey, I've always had this teacher fantasy. If I send you a dick pic, would you rate it and give me your feedback, but from the perspective of a teacher?" So she was oh, like, boy. "This is weird, but interesting." She mm-hmm. goes, "Because I've gotten dick pics all the time, and it's boring." And so what she did is she created a report card style review of people's dick pics and now that has taken off and that's been a large part of her business where guys submit a dick pic and she sends them an actual report card of what she thinks their pic looks like what does she do with the pics does she post them on her only fans too and give the report card i don't know i don't i don't know i, I didn't sign up to her only fans to see what <laughs> she posts. that wasn't I was saying, did, did she send you a, a, a report card <laughs> I just got a thumbs up emoji. <laughs> just... <laughs> just two thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was weird because it was the black thumbs up, and she's white, so I thought that was odd. But <laughs> was it a male hand or female? Hand? <laughs> it did look a little hairy. The knuckles. You know the crazy thing about it is the fact that people are sending these things. Like, you hear women who go. Look, there's nothing sexy about a dick, dick pic, right? The other thing is nobody ever wants a BDR, right? And But the BDR we always talk about is is in the actual act and not in the fact of you sending a pic. So what happens when, does she grade on a curve? No pun intended. <laughs> is, is it a pass or fail? I mean, is, is, is it, does anybody ever get 100? <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know what the criteria is for her rating scale. I, I don't know. Just know that she creates this. Um I don't want to go to her OnlyFans to try to find out. Mm-hmm. But my thing is like, why do you want to know? Why yeah. do you want a stranger to rate it? Because to me, if you're not a stranger, we're in person and you're like okay with what you're seeing, great. If you call me again, that means you liked it. A plus. <laughs> I, f- I feel good. That's all I need to know. You know what I mean? If if they're coming back for seconds. <laughs> but here here's the other thing that I admire about this teacher. There is a niche for everything. Mm-hmm. Find your market. Mm-hmm. Find your fan base. So there's 4,000 out of the millions of people in the world. Yeah. 4,000 of them want to watch her on her OnlyFans. And some of them submit dick pics for her to rate it. And that's probably I. Right, it's a hundred dollars for me to rate to to give you a dick report card. Boom! It's extra. It's extra. Yes. So I'm hey, just like, I, I'm not make your it. money. I mean, I I think it is so. That's the great thing about the world right now in America. You can make money <laughs> doing stupid stuff, and there's a niche for people like the people who pour crap on their feet. Yep. There's guys who get off on that. There mm-hmm. are women who might like that. I mean, find your group. Whatever yeah. it is that you've got, find your group and make your money. Indeed. You know, and on speaking of finding your group and and, and making your money, so this is sticking to OnlyFans. It's, it's funny. Here we both are talking about OnlyFans, and neither of us has an OnlyFans account or subscription, right? How do you, how do you know if I do or don't? Do you I think I send you trying... the link? It's freaking weird. <laughs> I thought we were going to share the password if you ever signed up. Jesus Christ. You're kind of weird. See? (laughs) We're close. We need to be that close. I'm watching. I'm watching you. uh, This woman, you know, she signed up for OnlyFans and then she also, you know, made her own anonymous account to be able to and subscribe to uh, like, you know, 10 other accounts and actually paid for those. And she'd reach out to, to the content creators and nobody would really engage in conversation. She's like, you know what? I need, I'm going to do mine differently because it feels if if I'm paying for your content, I should at least be able to talk to you, right? Mm-hmm. And so she made it where she could talk to her fans, and um, <clears throat> then she allowed them to make decisions for her, right? Mm-hmm. And some of those decisions uh, are made by those who subscribe are able to 
suggest things. And then she'll put it up in a poll, which she'll put on, like, I think her Telegram account, which allows this general public to vote on it as well. But once those votes are in, the poll is complete. Whatever they decide, she d- she's going to do it. Like, she walked away from an internship that wasn't she didn't feel was fulfilling. Um, and when I tell you she's 22 years old, you go, okay, that sounds about right. Um, <laughs> she, she broke up with... the spirit with- world guide me. <laughs> yeah, and the spirit world will be social media. Um, yeah. She broke up with a boyfriend and even blocked him. Um, you know, based on social media. So different things that are not bad for her. She took a helicopter ride based on her fans' votes. Now, she's got a fear of heights, right? I have a fear of heights. I love to fly. I will say, when you go up in a helicopter, it's very different than going up in a plane. And I've flown in small planes. I've flown, I've flown in the, the, the eight-seaters, uh, in, you know, the Islanders, the Trilanders, the, the Dash 8s, and anybody who in the Caribbean knows exactly the planes I'm talking about while you go, why are you flying in that, um, in, in that du- crop duster? because <laughs> that's about the size of these planes. They're really that small. Um, but it's different in those with a fair of heights than in the helicopter. So that, that, was, that was a lot for her to still go, all right, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Um, and she's just like, you know, leave it up to the fans. They choose the next polls, and they, deser- they determine what I do. Um, and it's working for her. Does it say how many subscribers she has? And here's it why I asked not. that. Here's why I asked that. If she has a large amount of subscribers, remember the the story we did, what, a year or so ago about the girl with the OnlyFans that Mm -hmm. acts like a dog? Yes. And like walks, but she's making bank doing this. So she's found her niche, right? Mm -hmm. For her to walk away from an internship, maybe it wasn't something she wanted anyway. Right. And so, great, I'm going to go ahead and do what these guys tell me. Breaking up with her boyfriend, I wonder if there's more context. It wasn't like I'm in a happy relationship. I love this guy. Oh, y'all vote for me to break up with them? Okay. Right. I don't nope. know. I, I think this is kind toxic of toxic ex boyfriend. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Now, if it's toxic and you got, okay, yes, everything's going to, everyone would encourage you to get out of that relationship. Not everybody walks away, though. And that's her point is that people kind of, the things that she wouldn't have done, this is why it's positive for her, is they encourage her to do the things that she wouldn't do because a lot of people don't walk away from the toxic ex. Well, I keep hearing Cat Williams in the back of my head. It's called self esteem, bitch. <laughs> Come on. Everybody knows crazy sex is what? I get it. I get it. If, if, if this helps her, if this helps her get out of situations and wants to explore life, great. And if she has a subscriber count to do it where it doesn't mm-hmm. impact her negatively financially, you found a niche. You do your thing and have people tell you what to do. Now, the question is, what happens when they vote for her to do crazy stuff that potentially could be a health risk? Like, the remember the girl that was going to uh, lick in toilet seats, public yeah. toilet seats? You know, so what if they t- all vote for her to go do something like that? Here's the thing, though, and, and this is why I think it's it's safe for her, because it sounds crazy. And it's I'll be honest, I'd never, I never encourage my sister to do that. I never encourage my daughter to do that. Anybody I know personally to do that, right? But I, the thing is that people can suggest things for her to do. But she creates the poll and puts it up. It's not like somebody else creates the poll and then everybody votes on it. it. So she still creates the polls. So she knew putting up, especially the helicopter ride, like, okay, well, I don't really want to do it. But if they say it, I'll do it. Because yeah, it's okay, that makes subscribe. sense. And, that makes yeah. sense. If she's doing it's it that way, I mean, that makes sense. I'm just thinking that people, like somebody has an idea and everyone else co-signs. Oh, yes, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> but if, if, if she's saying, I have, a, I have a fear of heights, should I take a helicopter ride? Please vote. And they all vote for her to do it? Okay, that's different. And again, she's found a niche. It's the same thing like when you said to me, knowing, matter of fact. I didn't know. You found out in the middle of the podcast and immediately, that I had a fair of heights, it immediately went, all right, I will do the next season of Married at First Sight if you agree to jump out of the plane before you walk down the aisle. Okay. <laughs> To which, to which my wife was like, why the hell would you do this before we walk down the aisle? <laughs> and I think it was a win, win, win. It was. I loved it. You loved it. Your wife loved it. It was. Awesome. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> she, no, she I loved was, it because you, you made it. Yeah. Like you landed. <laughs> and so now, okay, everything is great. Had it not gone that way, she would be feeling differently right now. Let's just be honest. So. And, and she didn't love it, the fact that when, when we got done, we called her from my phone, but we? you were the one. We? 
when we start speaking French, we, <laughs> is is we sick? Is that what's going on now? Is this the You're right. So you call slave her master syndrome? Phone. We you FaceTimed up on my phone. <laughs> you handed me the phone. <laughs> And well, you since said, do this. Since you didn't want okay. it to be we, that it's is right. you. It's all right. No, it's all right. It's all right. We, we sick. You're right. You're right, boss. We sick. <laughs> but to that point, I did. I had thought about jumping out of a plane and just needed an extra push, and that was the one. So for everyone who wanted us to do Married at First Sight, um, you know, you're welcome. Because <laughs> that was the one that got him to come back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you jump out of a plane, yeah. I'll go ahead and do another season. Why not? <laughs> Are we saying... We gonna do it again? Hey, you know I have no problem doing it again. Don't just say it for the gram. Like, do you mean it? Oh it yeah, again? no. But this time, you've got to talk to my wife. <laughs> She's gonna do it with us. Awesome. The yeah, three okay. of us. That'll be so dope. <laughs> so dope. I'll I'll buy. I'll buy. Every, I'll pay everyone's jump. <laughs> three of us do it. Oh boy. She's definitely not doing it. I tell you that right now. She's definitely not doing it. Well, not with that attitude. She's not. She got like help. <laughs> oh boy, are you in trouble the next time you come around? <laughs> She'll forget. She don't. She don't remember any of this. <laughs> she never watches the podcast anyway. Yeah, even if she does watch the podcast, when she goes to bed, it's like an etch a sketch. She just shake it, and it's just a clean slate. She doesn't remember anything. Oh my God! And y'all wonder why he's still single. Oh. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see her name in the comments because I know her name in the comment. I know her username. I'm just yeah, waiting you to do see. Now. It. <laughs> Wait a see. It. If only you could do gifts on YouTube comments. I bet she'd give me them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't forget we're back here Thursday. Married at First Sight, Season 15, San Diego. Then, of course, back again. Matter of fact, are we getting there? It's because it's, it's, we... Wow. Next week? It's, ma- yeah, matter of fact, not only Married at First Sight, love it's the first Love is Blind. Yeah. So um, what are we, we going to do? Are we going to we go ahead and put it out for uh, Sunday? Give us a couple days to watch the um, to watch the show? Yeah. I'd yep, do that. Okay. I can commit. So Sunday, we'll be back with another one. Love is Blind, first four episodes, as we do four weeks of of that, cover the entire season, including the reunion and um, and the finale. So, hey, looking looking forward to some more great content. Me too. Let's do it. Hey, I'm Yanni Root. And I'm Just Terrell. Make sure you follow us at Yanni Root, at Just Terrell, and at RGRT Pod. Yeah, send us some of your random thoughts or some of the bullshit you find on the internet. We'll talk about it on the regular show. It's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Cheers. Cheers.